So just before that highlight reel, Dr. Martin Owen was talking about the importance of conscience rights. And that's something that both Conservative Party leadership candidates, Derek Sloan and Les and Lewis, have highlighted in their respective campaigns. It's been a privilege to support these candidates, especially because pro-lifers are among the most engaged voting bloc. They volunteer, they donate, and if they know a candidate will stand up for their issues, they punch above their weight in nomination meetings and elections. And so Matt, um, do you want to talk to us about why a Campaign Life Coalition, even though a nonpartisan organization, is still involved in this Conservative Party leadership race? Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, Campaign Life, many, many years ago, we were the ones who started the, the Parliamentary Pro-Life Caucus, which at that time had members from the various different parties. And over the past, well, re more recently, it seems like uh, uh, both uh, the Conservative Party and the Liberal Party, well, with the Liberal Party, we all know pro-lifers need, need not apply. But with the Conservative Party, uh, there is this movement within that party to actually silence pro-life voices just as well. In other words, become a second Liberal Party. We don't want a seat at the table when it comes to these party politics. We demand a voice. And I think with this CPC leadership race, this is an opportunity for us with these two candidates to actually get a voice, win that voice, and use that voice to create change. Earlier this week, uh, CLC Political Operations Director Jack Fonseca had a chat with uh, some of these candidates, and this is how it went. Hello, Canada. My name is Jack Fonseca, Political Operations Director with Campaign Life Coalition. During our virtual National March for Life programming, we'll be interviewing both of the pro-life candidates who are officially in the Conservative Party of Canada's leadership race. And I cannot overstate the importance of this race because the next Conservative leader will most likely become your future Prime Minister. I'm pleased to introduce you to one of those leadership candidates, Dr. Leslin Lewis. Well, listen, let's jump right into it. Dr. Lewis, you own a successful law firm in Toronto, and you have an impressive academic resume with a PhD in law, a master's in environmental studies, an MBA concentration in business in, in the environment, and other academic credentials that, that I can't even remember. But to me, the most impressive thing about you is how you have run as an out and proud pro-life candidate and announced several pro-life policies in your election platform dealing with abortion. Could you please run through those policies for the, the benefit of our viewers? Sure, Jack. So I just want to start by saying that I believe in the sanctity of life, and that includes preborn life. And life issues have divided Canadians and, and women for so long. And so I began by finding common ground and advancing policies that I believe the majority of Canadians can get behind. So the first policy that I introduced that I believe helps protect vulnerable women and girls is to ban the misogynistic practice of sex-selective abortion. And the majority of Canadians agree that it is wrong to abort a fetus on the sole purpose that it is a girl. The second policy is to seek measures to protect women from coerced abortion. And the majority of um, Canadians agree again that a woman should not be coerced into having an abortion. The third policy helps to support pregnancy care centers. And this is to make sure that women in crisis pregnancy situations have the care that they need and that they deserve. And then the fourth policy is just ending Canadian taxpayer funding of overseas foreign abortions. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you, uh, Dr. Lewis. Those are uh, very important incremental uh, pro-life policies that will both save lives and also do another thing in that they'll um, help us to uh, have the abortion issue in front of Canadians. Uh, you know, every single measure that there is that's a, an incremental pro-life measure like that um, helps us to talk about uh, pro-life issues and get people, Canadians, thinking about the right to life of preborn children. Now, uh, another sanctity of life issue on which this year's National March for Life is focusing is the topic of euthanasia and assisted suicide. So my first question to you, Dr. Lewis, is where do you stand on euthanasia? Well, Jack, I oppose euthanasia. I feel that it is very important for us to honor the life, especially of our seniors and those that are in palliative care. And they've given so much to our society. And I believe that we should give them back the love and comfort that they need in their last days. 
they should feel that during their last days, they're not a burden to society. And that's why under my government, I, I would invest in palliative care centers. Now, uh, another related question, uh, Justin Trudeau's liberal government legalized this form of homicide euthanasia in 2016 under the false pretense that it would be restricted only to people who are dying. But less than four years later, here we are, the Trudeau government has introduced Bill C-7, which aims to expand the categories of killable people to those who are not even dying, but who merely have some kind of physical uh, suffering that they feel is intolerable, even if that condition is treatable or even if it's curable. Um, Bill C-7 will also expand access to death by lethal injection to those Canadians who are not physically sick whatsoever, but who merely claim um, that they're experiencing psychological suffering that's intolerable. So uh, the, the, my next question to you is, if the Liberals succeed in passing Bill C-7, which is entirely possible given that the NDP the, 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 and the Bloc and, and the Green all support euthanasia quite rapidly, would you repeal it, uh, Bill C-7 if elected Prime Minister so, so as to at least claw back Canada's advance towards euthanasia on demand? Yes, I would. I would repeal Bill C-7. And more specifically, I feel that I, I disapprove of euthanasia being extended to include psychiatric patients and those struggling with mental illness. And I also vehemently oppose euthanasia being expanded to include teenagers that are suffering from mental illness. I, I'm glad you mentioned that, Dr. Lewis, the, the issue of uh, children uh, and access to euthanasia, because although that is not in Bill C-7, um, the, the Trudeau government has uh, hinted that that's where it is going to take this law eventually, that it will also expand uh, euthanasia to, to, uh, to children under the age of 18. Now, uh, Dr. Lewis, be before we close, you know, we have uh, perhaps tens of thousands of Canadians marching for life this week, albeit uh, virtually, and they're watching you right now. Um, is there anything you'd like to say that, to them in closing uh, or some words of encouragement as they're virtually marching for life? Yes, Jack, I'd just like to share with them one of the reasons why I'm running for office, and that is because I want to change the discourse in our democracy from one that demonizes people who hold different beliefs to a system that is truly that it's truly meant to be a system where we can have healthy debates about issues like life issues, including euthanasia and abortion. I truly believe in the democratic process, and I believe that conscience rights of medical professionals such as doctors should be upheld. I also believe that members of parliament should be able to vote their conscience freely on moral issues. I also believe that we can restore our democracy to a point where it respects people like you and me and respects our right and our belief that life is sacred. Uh, Dr. Lewis, you mentioned conscience rights, uh, that you would support conscience rights for, for doctors and healthcare workers. Uh, just for the sake of clarity, um, does that, uh, are you saying that uh, part of your platform that you would support legislation uh, to protect the rights, uh, the conscience rights of healthcare workers to not have to uh, either refer or participate in uh, either abortion or euthanasia? Yes, that's correct. I would do that, Jack. That is correct.